What's up everybody, welcome back to Mad Medicine. My name is Farhan, I am a medical student. And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you who are old, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about getting into medical school with a low GPA. How do you do that? How should you go about that? And should you be worried if you have a low GPA right now or if you graduate with a low GPA? We're gonna be discussing all of that here today. But before we talk about that, I gotta tell you guys a little bit of news, a little bit of updates. Number one, we have started our USMLE step one videos for you, for those of you who are medical students who are about to start medical school, you can watch those videos. And we have also started releasing our MCAT videos uh, and we're starting with bio so if you are about to take the MCAT if you guys are studying for the MCAT or if you guys just want to get ready for the MCAT you should watch our channel you should subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be releasing those every single week all right and we're still gonna be releasing these talking head videos with me talking about everything that has to do with medicine and medical school and being a pre-med etc etc on the channel so with that being said uh, let's talk about getting into medical school with a low GPA I know some of you guys are probably worried and I know some of you guys are probably out of med out of uh, undergrad and are probably thinking hmm I may have a low GPA right now or I graduated with low GPA how am I gonna get into medical school and I want you to understand that getting into medical school is not only contingent upon your GPA. Yes, yes, your GPA does matter for getting into medical school, but if you have a low GPA or if you graduated with a low GPA, there are several ways you can fix that. We're first gonna talk about if you are in undergrad right now and you're going through uh, the pre-med cycle, you haven't graduated, how you can improve your GPA and how you can become a better applicant. And then in, uh, later we're gonna talk about how, uh, if you have graduated, how you can improve your GPA. Now, when you are a pre-med student, when you are an undergraduate who is studying to get into medical school, you need to make sure you GPA is very good but it's not just your entire GPA that really matters when it comes to medical schools there is a specific GPA that the that medical schools look at and that GPA is called your BCPME okay which uh, stands for your bio your physics your chemistry uh, your organic chemistry and your math and English classes everything else doesn't really matter that's the truth okay that's what medical schools are usually looking at that's what they gauge as far as your uh, GPA. Now, if your biochemistry, physics, math, and English classes are all good, if you're doing well in those classes, your BCPME is gonna be high. But if you kind of you know, uh, struggled a little bit in, in undergrad, in college, which happens, keep that in mind, it definitely happens. It's not like I got straight A's. No, I got C's, I got B's, that happened. Uh, you can still get into medical school. Now, the thing you wanna understand is when you are early on in your career, if you are a freshman, if you are a sophomore in college and you are just starting out, you should definitely try to get the best grades possible. You should definitely strive to get those A's, those A pluses, whatever it may be, you need to get the best grades because you need to pad your GPA early on. If you are able to pad your GPA early on, you're gonna be good when you take a hit later on. But if you know something happened freshman year, which happens to a lot of us, uh, then you need to make sure that when you are taking classes in undergrad, uh, you not only take the easiest classes, and I'm sure you can find the easiest professor on ratemyprofessor.com, so go check out that website. Uh, that's you know no advertisement, I'm just telling you that that's an, uh, a website I often use to see what's a good professor. You should take the easiest classes. You should also take classes that are called padding classes or uh, classes that are designed to be easy. So what I did is I was a bio major, and uh, I needed to improve my GPA a little bit in my third year. Now, what ended up happening was all the classes that were available in my third year were upper division, high level, like bio classes. Classes that I was like, yo, I don't wanna take this cause this gonna be hard, man. So I didn't wanna take those classes. I didn't wanna work super hard, but I needed to improve my GPA. So what I ended up doing is I took classes, uh, uh, not upper div, but lower div bio classes that helped me in no way, shape, or form when it came to getting uh, my bio degree. 
those were the non-science bio classes. So I took the like a, a basic bio class that non-science majors have to take. It didn't help my major, but it padded my GPA because it was a bio class. I took some astronomy classes, which technically are under physics. So I took those classes. I was interested in astronomy, but they also happened to be super easy classes. So I did that. And, and by doing these small classes that weren't a lot of burden for me to take, but also didn't help my GPA. Uh, sorry, I didn't help my major credits. I was able to pad my GPA a little bit more and improve it. So if you are struggling, number one, take the easiest classes that you can find, okay? Try to get the easiest professors, try to do that, and you know, get to know the professors, because that does help out. You know, everyone says that you, know, you should get to know the professor, and you should, they're human. They'll fudge the grades a little bit for you if they want to. That's the first thing. The second thing is try to take extra classes that are super Super easy, especially if they're bio classes for non-science majors. Those are the easiest classes you can find because think about it. By this point in your third and fourth year, third and fourth year of undergrad, uh, you are an upper div student. You are uh, you are taking upper div high level classes that are kind of difficult, like cell and developmental biology, microbio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can easily take a basic entry level bio class. So basic that like you can take that stuff in your sleep. And that's what I did. I took the most easiest classes to pad my GPA and it helped my GPA improved. And uh, I ended up graduating with honors because of those classes, honestly. So I highly, highly recommend that if you guys are in, uh, in undergrad currently. Now, if you have graduated, there is still a way you can improve your GPA. And that way is by looking at the other components uh, of, of improving your GPA. Because you have graduated, you can't take classes anymore. So there's two things you can do. Number one, you can pursue a, a postgraduate degree, like a master's in public health, a uh, master's in, in uh, uh, medical education, or master's in science, whatever you wanna do. You can pursue a master level degree. And what that'll show medical schools, especially admission committees, is that you are dedicated to higher level learning. You are dedicated to improving your knowledge, to improving your education, and to get an uh, uh, degree. Will it make you more competitive? I don't really know. To be honest with you, I've talked to deans, I've talked to people who are on admissions committees, and some people say yes, some people have said no. So I'm not gonna tell you that that's gonna make you a more competitive applicant per se. It can, definitely. Uh, but what it does is, let's say your, your undergrad GPA wasn't that as good as you wanted it to be, as it should be. If your medical, uh, sorry, if your master level uh, program GPA is good, if you are getting 4.0s, if you are getting high three fives and above, if you are showing you made a huge leap and improvement in you know that short amount of time in your grades, then it'll definitely look better because medical schools are more likely gonna, gonna look at your most current grades, which are gonna be from your master's program, rather than your previous bio uh, grades, of your undergrad grades, excuse me. So that is one way you can improve your GPA by pretty much having supplemental GPA. And another way of doing this supplemental GPA trick is by pursuing a, uh, a postgraduate uh, post-baccalaureate. A, a post-bac program is a program where you can go to school, you go back to school for about a year. Most post-bac programs are for a year. And you take upper div, bio, and pre-med classes, but you have to do good in those classes. That's the, that's the main thing you need to understand. You will be retaking some of the classes you may have already taken. You may be taking brand new classes and you're going to take one year of those classes and that year allows medical schools to now look at another year of your GPA. Essentially, it puts more classes in your GPA and letting you improve your GPA. So at my school, they run a post -bac program and they very heavily look at the post -bac GPA before they'll look at the undergrad GPA if someone went through their post -bac program or a post -bac program because they understand that you know uh, college is difficult it affects people in many different ways and people have a lot of stuff happening outside of school that can affect grades right it happens life happens so they also look at your post -bac GPA to make sure that they're giving you the best option and a lot of medical schools are doing that they're looking at you as a whole applicant 
So that is uh, another way you can fix your GPA, especially if you have graduated from undergrad, if you're done with college. Now, before I end the video, I do want to say whether you are in college, whether you have graduated college, whether you are in college and you're taking extra, you know, BS classes just to pad your GPA and make it better, or if you're graduating doing an additional degree or a post back you need to make sure that your other two uh, components of your application for the medical school applications are strong. So what are the three main components, right? You have your GPA, you have your extracurriculars, and then you have your MCAT. If your GPA is low, then you gotta, gotta, gotta make sure, folks, you gotta make sure that your MCAT and your extracurricular activities are stellar, that they're amazing. The reason why is number one, it, it kind of distracts uh, from the fact that you have a bad GPA, okay? That's a simple truth, it does. If you have a really high MCAT score, if you have a really, really high MCAT score, I'm just giving an example, don't expect that you need a really, really high MCAT score, don't take it that way. But if you have a really, really high MCAT score, they're not really gonna be so worried about your GPA because look, you definitely have the knowledge, but maybe there's something in your personal life that was keeping you from studying. That happens, right? Or if you do good on your MCAT and you have really good references and really good clinical experience, they'll know that this person is very, very motivated to pursuing medicine, to becoming a physician, and they will take you more likely uh, than if you did not have those those extracurriculars or the a good MCAT score. So definitely the other two poor portions of your application are really, really important and it often will help out if you guys are able to offset the difficult uh, and, you know, the bad part about having a low GPA. So with that being said, that concludes our video for today. I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, folks, send it to a homie, send it to a friend who may also find this helpful. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And when you subscribe, hit the bell notification. And we'll be right back right here. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Okay, so really quickly before I end the video, I want you guys to understand that as a pre-med student, you're often thinking about the fact that maybe you're not going to get into medical school or you're going to talk about if I ever get into medical school. From now on, you should stop thinking like that. You really should. The way you should be thinking, no matter who you are, no matter what your situation is, no matter what your GPA or your MCAT score or your extracurricular activities are, you should think about when I get into medical school. That should be in your mindset. That's it. It's not if I get into medical school, it's when I get into medical school. If you start thinking like that, no matter uh, what issue you have in your application, you will get into medical school because you have decided you are going to get in. It's just a matter of when, not if. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. All the people who are new, all the people who are old, thank you for your support. Thank you for being a part of you know our channel and everything we do. If you guys want me to talk about a specific topic, if you guys want me to cover a specific concept or topic, whatever it may be, leave a comment below. Let me know because I'll make sure that happens for you guys. I'll make sure you guys get the right content, the right material you need to succeed. So thank you. I'll see you guys back here real soon in a week. Peace, fam.